Yeah, so fried liver. All right, Kitty, is it gonna rain tonight? Maybe. All right. Hmm. Some of you have asked me about the romantic opening, also known as the fried liver attack. Comes from the Italian variation. You could play bishop c5, but then we get you know, many moves, d3, c3, very soft moves. Or we can get the wild queen of the openings, queen of the gambits, the Evans gambit. Okay? We might get the Evans gambit. But the question on tab was the fried liver attack after knight f6, black threatens the e4 pawn. We could defend it softly with d3 is what most players do, and it's probably the objective right move. We don't want to play knight c3, which is what Dave all the time does. He always plays knight c3. And, you know, he's done this like 50 times against me. Allowing knight e4 and then, you know, knight e4, d5, and black has a fine game winning the piece back. Or bishop f7, king f7, knight e4, d5. Black has the bishop pair. These knights are not good. Black has a good game. So, white is in a state of crisis here. He has to decide what he wants to do with this pawn. Should he play d3, or should he lash out and play the wild romantic move, which was the most popular move in the 19th century in this position, the fried liver attack with knight g5. Now, this move, knight g5, violates opening principles. Why does it violate opening principle, shall we say? Anyone in the chat? Anyone at all? Dave? Anyone? Or am I speaking to myself? Why does it violate opening? Moving the same piece twice. Very good. Moving the same piece twice, but it is justified by the fact that white has tremendous pressure on f7. Now, if black can beat back the attack, then black will have a good game, and this knight on g5 will look ridiculous. But before we get to that, black can even play the extremely wild bishop c5, completely ignoring the threat. And now... A move like knight takes f7 is completely wild and insane, you know, forking the queen and the rook. And after knight takes f7, we don't move the queen. We counter-sacrifice, bishop takes f2. King f1 is wild. King takes f2. Knight takes e4. Very wild positions. All of these are good for black, really. King e3 and queen h4. <laughs> Threatening check. And mate. So if he just takes here, you're going to get made it pretty uh, fast in this position. This would lead to mate and two. So you can see the savage attacks that are going on. I don't want to dwell on this complicated position, um, but it's uh, incredibly intense. I've had this for uh, both uh, colors. Play d5, he can even castle in this position. It's incredibly insane. As you can see, castles, yeah. I've even had this game in a simul against a, a very strong, uh, great mathematician, Rook h4. I've had this position. So, this is a wild uh, position. This is called the Traxel Wilkes Bar Gambit. Okay, but after knight g5, the most obvious move is for black to simply play d5. And of course, you know, developing himself, and then pawn takes d5. And now no really good player here is going to play knight takes d5. Knight takes d5 is simply a mistake and leads to the fry liver attack. Okay, so we don't want to play knight takes d5 because that connects the knight and the bishop. 
to hit f7. So after knight takes d5, white can immediately force matters and play the what's called the classical, if it can be classical at all, the classical fried liver attack. Now, I've never had fried liver, but I mean, I've had it over the chessboard. So knight takes f7, king takes f7, and now queen f3 check. Uh, so obviously king g8, you just get mated immediately. Mate. <clears throat> so you'd have to play king e6 here to defend but you can see the king is out in the open and this position is incredibly complicated but with this attacks I could have black to play knight b4 or knight e7 and these attacks favor white these complications can analyze it for fun however in this position after d5 take knight d5 white has an even better move than playing knight takes f7. White can go for an improved fried liver, which was one of Morphe's favorite moves. Place d4 here. <clears throat> and if knight takes d4, then c3 picks up this knight. Okay. So let's say he plays e takes d4. I'm not gonna get into too many details. White can castle now. And now the threat is rookie one, and also knight takes f7. Very serious uh, threats. Let's say he plays bishop e6, then there's rookie one. And after queen d7, because there was a threat, we go again for the fried liver motif, knight takes f7. He can't take with the bishop. He can't take with the queen, because bishop takes d5. So king takes f7, queen f3. And if king g8, rook takes e6, queen takes e6, bishop takes d5, or queen takes d5, leads to a straight mate. <clears throat> so, I had this game once. The guy asked me to play on the street. I pretended that I didn't know how to play or something, just as a joke, or that I was a beginner. I was just playing for fun, and this was the game, and I, I played this against him rather quickly. And then later I told him that I was somewhat experienced. Queen takes e6, bishop d3, and the king is filleted, fried, so to speak, in the middle of the board. Alright. So, in the game, castles, Morphe had this game. Bishop to e7, and now Morphe played, and he was playing this game while playing eight players blindfolded at the same time. Bishop f7, king f7, queen f3, threatening this. And now you can see that unlike the original fried liver, there's no pawn on e5. There's some hardcore videos of me hustling, but they're hidden videos. They're, they're secret videos. Knight c3, double exclam, bringing the rook to e1, sacking another piece. Famous Morphe game, also known as the Big Easy on chessgames.com. All right. Knight e5, bishop f4. Everything is pinned and completely destroyed. Mm. Yes. Exactly, Jim. I don't speak Italian, but uh looks like uh the rough position. So Morphe here playing blindfolded took everything, bringing the king into the middle of the board. Check. Oh, rook e1 check. If king d6, queen d5. Now I've shown this before on stream, but I'll show it again. Bishop takes d5, exclamation. If queen takes d5, we could win the queen for free, but I would rather go for checkmate in one move. Mate. So in the game, black played rook e8, and now Morphe announced checkmate in seven moves. Seven. One. Blindfolded, by the way. Two. Is this two? Wait a second. Yes, it must be two. And if king d6, 
Oh, wait a second. Not this way. How did I get this incorrect? Ah, one. Check here. King c5, and now two, b4. And if king d6, bishop b7 is mate. Oh. Or bishop f3 is mate. Completely fried, filleted in the center of the board. Three. And then, oh no, sorry. Queen d4 first, right? Three. And then four more moves. Four. He didn't have a computer at the time. He was doing it in his head. Four. And it's just a routine mate at this point. King a4. What is it? Right. King a4, five, six. And he understood all this blindfolded while playing seven other players. <clears throat> blindfolded at the same time. Mate. Then his opponent again asked him, but what, Mr. Morphy, would happen if instead of rookie eight, I just played pawn takes b2 instead? And Morphy said, with his back turned to the board, well, blindfolded, of course, he said, mate in six. One. Let me try to do a blindfold. Rookie four. Try to move the pieces blindfold. King c5. Can I get it? No. I have to grab two. Queen a3. King takes d5. I got that one. Nope. Oh. Three. I'd rather just announce queen d3. King c6. Rook c4. King b5. Queen b3. King a5. Rook a4. So you just roll the king off the board. Roll the king off the board. So Morphe saw that mate in six. So that is the fried liver when, you know, black allows it by playing knight takes d5, which is a mistake. Now that being said, there are some players who allow it, want to defend it, and after um, d4, they might even try bishop b4 check first to take the knight away from, from c3. And after c3, then play bishop uh, e7. So there's no more knight c3. That being said, this is still this is still a good attack for white after knight takes f7, I believe. And queen e4 with the idea of f4. Yes, this is still a good attack for white. So nobody should be allowing this with the king come into a... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Now, Morphy did have some literature at the time. There was... There were many world championship matches. There was stuff that he read all the literature that was available. It wasn't like there was no chess. But, I mean, comparing it today, you could basically say it was nothing. But I think that made him more creative. No, he, he, he knew all the, the games of, of the day. And I actually had a friend of mine gave me a book of his newspaper columns that he wrote. You could see how knowledgeable he was of everything that was published. And back then there was a, there was a German opening book called the Handbuch. And, of course, all the players got their theory from that. Just of the games from the 1850s. So now we're going to talk about um, if black defends properly. And now we're going we're gonna to maybe view it from, from the black point of view. Now, black needs to defend properly. Uh, objectively speaking, if black defends, defends properly... I want to see knight g5, and I think black should be playing for the win. Um, if white uses a, some intense computer analysis, he could probably hold the position. Okay, there are a few moves for white now that he could play. Three in particular. One, one of which I view as the best move, knight a5. Um, the other two are b5 and knight d4. Um, the idea of b5 is if he takes it, we win the bishop pair, and that's a good position for us. And he has no development. You see, this knight is ridiculous. If he takes on b5 with the bishop, then queen takes d5 with a double attack, and that's ridiculous. So in this position, after b5, I, as white, have played bishop f1, which is well known. And I won the New York State title with this in the last round, bishop f1. Obviously a strange 
counter developing move. Hmm. And now if knight takes d5, now white can play bishop takes b5 because there's no more queen d5 threatening to take the knight on c6. Um, so black would play knight d4. And then this theory goes on for a while. This is not the best line for white. c3, uh, knight takes d5. There are a number of moves for white. My game with c takes d4. It's complicated. There's even knight takes f7 here, which I've played with Andrew uh, in a game here on the show. But this is, this is a very complicated line. Chances for both sides. Um, main line goes like take, queen takes g5, and bishop b5, king d8. Fisher had this in a simul as well as white. You can see black doesn't, white doesn't have much development, but black's king isn't very good either. Okay, so, um, all right, so ed5. The best move is uh, knight a5. Knight d4 also transposes to what I just showed you with b5. Same variation. Okay, so knight a5 is the move that I would have my students play. Yes, exactly, Paul. Good, good question. d5, take, b5, bishop f1, queen takes d5, knight c3. Queen comes back, and then bishop comes back out, pinning the knight. Okay, so knight a5, the best move. Now, before we get to bishop b5 check, uh, Italian is seen all the time at the top level. Uh, they just play d3 here. It's, Italian is as, as popular as the Roy Lopez now. Just nobody plays knight g5 because of what I'm about to show you. Um, so, knight a5. Before we get to bishop b5, back in Morphy's time, um, back in Morphy's time, they, they used to play d3, which was the main variation. But this d3 fell out of favor in about the 1950s, and now h6. <clears throat> and you see this knight is just not coordinated. And this is the problem with this opening for white, is that after knight a5, the bishop's under attack, and this knight is just looking ridiculous. So white's going to lose a lot of tempi and fall back. So after d3, black will play h6. Uh, knight f3, and now e4, exclamation, hitting hitting the knight, and if he takes, we, we win the bishop. There are some lines in this position. Um, Bronstein once sacrificed a piece in this position, but we're not going to get into that. Queen e2, and then knight takes c4, and I believe... The normal move now is bishop c5, the best move. And now, you know, he's dealing with, you know, very soon castling, and rooks come to e8. So white ignores this, black just castles, this is under attack, and the rooks come to e8. So if he takes, then we win the queen. So he's under uh, duress in this position. Usually they, they used to play h3 here to get the knight to h2, castles. And then knight h2, and this was considered like a good defense for, for, for white. And sometimes black would like come knight h7. This was how it was played, but it came out later that after the move e3, double exclaim. Black's position, white's position, is sort of falling apart because after bishop b3, bishop b3, he can't take with the queen. Uh, and then rook e rook e8, and after f e3 then knight e4 threatening queen h4 um and knight g3 so if he castles knight g3 this position is ugly for white and as a result of that the move d3 fell out of favor so after knight a5 the move d3 fell out of favor one second Hold on, I got a message. Let me see something. Wow.
One second. All right. No, I mean, he didn't get it wrong with D3. That's just how it was back then. So one second, I have a distraction. Okay, so after nine a five. <clears throat> Threatening the bishop, so this knight on g5 isn't really doing anything, right? So, after knight a5, bishop to b5, he must check. But he's losing time, right? So now, c6, hitting the bishop, he must take with the pawn. And you can see that this these pieces are moving. This knight has moved twice, right? This bishop has moved twice now. And now, you know, where's the bishop going to go? Can it go to d3? Can it go to e2? So, can it go to a4? What do you guys think is the, the best move for the bishop in this position? So yeah, bishop d3 is the, the modern move, but bishop d3 is not a logical move because bishop d3 in this position blocks the uh, bishop on c1 and blocks the entire queen side, but it does grip the e4 square. So bishop c4 hangs uh, the piece. Jeeves is just uh, having a good time. Bishop a4 was the logical move, keeping the pin, but the problem is it almost loses a piece by force. You can see that black's lost after, white's lost after bishop a4. Because then h6, and if knight e4, knight f3, then you see this knight is being driven back e4. e4, now this knight is just running around the board. All these pieces are, you know, so this is why this is not really good opening. The high level g5, the knight's trapped. And if knight e5, then queen d4 picks up a piece. 
If he takes on c6, check, take, take, queen, d5, trapping the knight. Okay, so so bishop a4 fails. Now, the two moves, serious moves, are bishop d3 and bishop e2. Now, I had queen f3 played against me the other day, and that's an old move also from the 19th, 20th century. But um, that move is also not that great for white. Black can even give the rook, sack it, play bishop e7, castle with a wild attack, and then queen c7, bishop e7, and go and go for go for mate right so um you know that's one way to play it the other way to play it which i played the other day is to give a second pawn bishop e7 and then after he takes takes with check bishop d7 queen c4 i had this castle um this is threatened so usually knight c3 rook c8 queen e2 and now what is it h6 h6 right yeah h6 and he can't he can't play knight f3 again because e4 is just so rotten his position is falling apart he's so down in development if he takes like this now he gets crushed with bishop b5 and rook e8 is coming he can't castle d3 rook takes c2 so so uh, that's pretty rough, right? Um, and okay, E four, one second. Lecture is being interrupted. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. So, h6, if he plays knight e4, now we could take, yeah, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, and now we go for the nasty move. We could play bishop c6 but we go for rook c6 he can't take here because we win his queen so when he castles rook g6 threatening bishop c6 all right and this is a wild attack this is uh very good All right, so <clears throat> now after pawn takes, pawn takes. Two options for white, right? Bishop d3 or bishop e2. Both of these moves, mm, they lead to great attacking chances for black. Bishop d3 is the more normal move. And I think there is a game even alpha zero had his black, black one here. You could also play knight g4 here, you could play h6, knight e4, knight d5, and you could see this bishop on d3, the pieces here, they're, they're not very good for, uh, for white. You see, knight f4 is coming. It's only a pawn, so it's worth uh, a lot more than a pawn for, uh, for black, right? Okay, 
So, after c6, take, take. Bishop e2. This is the main line. This is what was played before bishop d3. Bishop d3 was also played. And it goes so far back as to Lasker, who played knight g4 in this position. After bishop d3, um, hitting this. And I believe now, if knight e4, this is a big mistake, f5 should just be winning for white, for black. I've had this in games. And now bishop c5 is the idea. And after castles, queen h4. Just totally crunched. After h3, knight takes f2, should be winning. Um, you even have queen g3, but knight takes f2 should be winning, right? Yeah, knight takes f2. Over. And rook f2, queen g3. Had that many times. So you can see that the blacks, white's development is just is just completely lagging in this in this position, right? Um, so take pawn takes. So usually bishop e2. Now, what I want to impress upon you in this position is after knight g5, d5, pawn takes d5, knight a5. He's just losing time. The knight is is behind. Two tempi. Bishop b5, c6, take. Pawn takes. Bishop has moved twice. Knight has moved twice. Now bishop has moved three times. Meanwhile, this knight is out of play for black, yes, but h6. Okay. And now the knight has to move three times. Now here, Fisher and Steinitz both tried knight h3, which is a tense move. Just very decentralizing. The hope is that black takes, bishop takes h3. And then white, you know, has the bishop pair, and he white's actually better in this position. But white doesn't have to play that move. White can play g5 in this position, and black can play g5, and black has a, also a good game. This is just a tough position. It's playable. Knight h3, I might play one day, but it's an old Steinitz move in Fisher. The knight f3 is the main move. I mean, you can see that if, if someone has to play knight h3 in this position, it's just a it's just a tough position for them. Okay, so knight f3, and now, again, we drive the knight away with e4, and again, where does the knight go? Knight g1's horrible. Can't go to h4, g5, so he's got to go knight e5. And now, in this main position of the fried liver attack, which is really, really should be called the fried liver defense, um, one second. All right, it's really the fried lever defense. So, knight e5. Black has many options. He could play bishop d6 if he wants. He could play queen c7. Um, bishop d6 is the main move. Hitting the knight. f4 is not good. Weakens the king. d4. Yes, you could do this, but now en passant. Knight takes d3 and queen c7. And he can't even castle. White's, black's coming queen. Castles, rook e8. Bishop's coming to f5. Rook's coming to d8. Huge compensation for black. I had this as, on both sides. It's very tough to play white in this position. It's playable, but it but it's tough to play white. So, um, and there's another move you can play is black, which is pretty exciting. Queen d4. This knight is really in trouble. Only move. This stops d4. Only move is f4, and now bishop c5. Threatening mate. He has. He can't castle. That's illegal. He's got to play rook f1. Um, but now you have to be careful. If you're black, because you might play knight d5, you know, innocently threatening something, but now you get your queen trapped in uh, one move, just out of nowhere your queen gets trapped. So, so that's why you want to play knight d5, but you play queen d8 first. It's the idea of knight d5, queen h4, and this is also a good line uh, for black, favored by some uh, Soviet grandmasters in the 50s. Okay, so that answers. I hope your questions on the fried liver, and to summarize that in, in five seconds, black has a fine game after knight f6, knight g5, d5, you just take it, play knight a5, drive the bishop away, bishop b5, you attack it, and in this position, black's, uh, I prefer black, it's gotta, white's got to move somewhere, main line just h6, knight f3, e4, knight e5, and we keep attacking, 
Black's developing his pieces quickly, this knight's being chased around, and it's uh, very unpleasant. Okay? So, yeah, so I'm going to be right back in uh, five minutes. I'm going to take a little break. I'll be right back, and uh, yeah. <laughs> 